The purpose of this podcast is to educate and inform. It is no substitute for professional care by your doctor or your qualified health care professional. Never disregard or delay professional medical advice because of something you've heard on this podcast or in any linked material. Guests who speak on this podcast express their own opinions, experience, and conclusions. Dr. Shirley neither endorses nor opposes any particular opinion discussed on this podcast. The views expressed on this podcast have no relation to those of any academic, hospital, practice, institution, or other entity with which Dr. Shirley may be affiliated. Welcome to Forever Fab, the podcast on fashion, the art of living, and all things beauty. This podcast is curated by Dr. Shirley Medea, MD, as the definitive source of holistic wellness through beauty. Welcome to the Forever Fab Podcast, the podcast dedicated to fashion, the art of living well, and all things beauty. I'm your host, Dr. Shirley Madare, your purveyor of this definitive source of living a beautiful life. This week's episode is dedicated to, let me see, what, do I, what can I dedicate it to? Love! That's the first thing that came to my mind, love, and I love this woman who I'm about to speak with. Today's topic is part of the Empowerment Series, and it's called Entrepreneurship and Transformation. Welcome to my interview with Elena Watley. Welcome, Elena. Thank you, Dr. Shirley. Elena Watley is a boss. She's a boss babe. When I think of boss babe, I see her, and I'm so blessed to be friends with many boss babes. Elena is the owner of Amazing Lash Studio in Hoboken, New Jersey. It's a franchise offering eyelash extensions. And five years ago, she started Brand Infinite. Uh, it's a sports and marketing agency. She's also a sports agent and sit, sat on and founded the Victor Cruz Foundation, which I know has done amazing work for people. So thank you for that. And perhaps more importantly, she's a mother to a beautiful daughter, and she is a friend. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks thank you for, for being. Me. Thank you for being <laughs> here and offering me your time. I know how busy you are. Of course. So we met. Was it a few years? Or three, four years ago? Oh gosh, I want to say it's probably been. Like seven, right? Yeah. Oh my god. Because it was years before you got married. Yes. I remember when you got engaged. You yeah. Got oh, it was a. It's been a minute. Yeah. So it's been a while. It's years been before a long that. I know while. my daughter was very young. She was probably a year old. Yeah, when I was gonna I say. I think you. she so was not even two. Years. Yeah. It's been many years. Yeah, it's been so a long time. Big up to Amoy. Yeah. Amoy Pitters and Amoy Couture Hair Salon, where yes. you don't just go for beautiful hair. You meet friends. Yes. That's, in fact, actually how I started Amazing Lash Studio. Um, I was getting my eyebrows done at a moist salon, and yeah. the, the woman who was doing my brows was like, the new thing is Amazing Lash Studio. You should look into it. Oh, wow. And here I am, you know, years, three years later, and I have six studios. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. So I underestimated. I thought yeah. you had one. You uh, have we've six. Grown. Yeah, we're growing. We're, you know, I have four, but one, two are closing in a couple weeks oh my so I've gosh. gone to like I've had this time around last year on this day I only had one active studio I believe, and in so one in 12 year months yeah one year you so now shout have out six. to Amoy shout out to Amoy you know, and the angel yes, who told you about Amazing Lash about Amazing and Studio. shout out to you for yeah. taking some advice and actually acting on it that's yeah. not easy to do and you know how many awesome. people give you advice yeah and you're just like yeah just okay don't. gee thanks you're like thanks see you later yeah okie doke yeah right and right. you did it. I did. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. I love I knew you see this this dedicated this <laughs> exactly. podcast is dedicated to love and it's Absolutely. right here. Do you feel the love? Absolutely. So we met many years ago. <laughs> and you have done so much in such little time. But tell me more about yourself. Where did you grow up? Tell me about your family. I met your fabulous mother. <laughs> but just just tell me who are you? Yes. Um I am from Passaic, New Jersey. Because and say so it. I'm right here from the backyard of New Jersey. Yes. I have um five brothers and sisters. Um I've got an older brother and older sis- two older sisters and then myself a younger brother and a younger sister. Yeah. Um I actually grew up in a single parent home oh. with just my mother. Um but I was very fortunate that my older brother and sister from my father's first marriage lived around the corner so yeah. they kind of grew up in our house like yeah. we were all together yes and um, my mom was a teacher for 35 years she taught elementary education um, mm. across town in 
a different sort of um, demographic area than where I grew up. But it so happened to be the school that offered gifted and talented in the town. So I went to school with my mother. (laughs) And the gifted and talented floor was the third floor. And of course, my mother, because she was so senior in the school, she her classroom was so for my entire life from first grade to sixth grade, my mother was on my floor. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But I made her proud. And, you know, she always prioritized her kids, her students. She called them her kids like Mm -hmm. over us. Like she'd be like, you walk to school. I have to pick other kids up. If I don't wow. pick them up, they don't go. You'll walk. You'll be fine. And wow. like she really taught me a lot, you know, and just she's a very, very strong woman and she's yes. an educator. And, yes. you know, she never sat down and did my homework with me or taught me things. But I think that who she is is embedded in me yeah. just by watching her. And, you know, they yeah. say the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. And, yeah. you know, when you're growing up, you're like, I'm nothing like my mother. And yeah. so you have a daughter <laughs> or a child. And then you're like, well, my kid is exactly like me. It starts yeah. to make you kind of reflect. Um, but I grew up in inner city community. You know, we just, you know, I was just got it done. Got things done, and I I luckily was in our gifted and talented program, and it was a great program. I think the inner city communities have amazing gifted and talented programs because they focus Mm -hmm. a lot on the students that are performing, you know, high levels. And you know, I did tutoring programs, and I just, you know, I grew up just a normal kid. You know, I look sometimes at kind of like my path. You know, college wasn't a big thing that people talked about. People just talked about getting to the next grade, you know, and staying out of trouble. Yeah. Um. So the fact that I kind of implemented this plan, you know, of success yeah. you know it's just kind of a, very a little different age. but I do still visit the community give back yeah. to the community yeah. you know and very active you know in the boys and girls club and just Good you know you. some of the kids that are there because I know what it's like coming from a community that you know isn't you know so somewhat seen in the eyes of society as like you know <clears throat> suburbia yeah. or super right. high you know right. highly educated or, or opportunities whose, or whose right parents can't Pay for. pay for them to go to private right. schools right. And, and whatnot. So um, I'm really proud about where I'm from. Yeah. Yeah. And, I'm, and I'm proud yeah. that you're proud. I'm, I'm proud. proud of you. Mm-hmm. And by the way, your lashes look Thank you. Oh, amazing. I Hence just amazing got lash. Oh, like my A couple goodness. days ago. Okay. They're amazing. Well, please Thank open you. a couple in New York yes, so I can I come actually see. am opening one oh! in New York. Yes, breaking um, news. Where? Breaking news. Um, fingers crossed in Brooklyn. Um, yes. So we'll see. Okay. One, that's the beginning. Okay. You know, we'll yeah, see. just the beginning. Just You're going to take over the eyelash yeah. world, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm ready am. for it. I'm ready for it. Bring it. So you obviously have a head for business and are an extremely successful entrepreneur. Congratulations. Thank you. When did you know you wanted to be a boss, babe? You know, I was talking to my brothers and sisters recently, and they were like, you know what? When you were young, you used to always tell stories that you were going to be on red carpets and you were going to be on the cover of a magazine. You And that you were going to be in Forbes and you used to read the Wall Street Journal and the New York Times. And they were like, and we used to just laugh at you because nothing you said made sense and we didn't (laughs) understand it, but you're doing it now. Mm. And I think, like, you know, I always knew that I had the ability to like influence people and and I had the ability to understand information yeah. and to be able to duplicate what I'm learning and put execution plans in place. Yeah. And I think all those things are like the building box for entrepreneurship yeah. because one being able to understand information, being able to influence people and also being able to have vision yes. are very important when you're an entrepreneur and so I feel like it's been within me since I was younger. I never knew what it was that I would yeah. end up doing Doing. I never knew which direction I wanted to go, yeah. um, but you knew you had this. Thing. I knew that I had this thing. I always had ideas that were outside of you know what was happening in front of me. I mm-hmm. always was able to see something and figure out how that thing could create more revenue by logistically making operating this way. And right. I think my brain has just always operated like that. So yeah. I'm very blessed that I've had the opportunity to be an entrepreneur. Yeah. Um, I was just telling a friend of mine today. I was like, you know, there's a saying where people are like, I don't want to work for anyone. I don't want to work 40 hours a week. And I'm like, yeah. well, when you work for yourself, you work 100. 100 so, right, exactly. You you know, it's like you're training, you yeah. know, working for someone and with someone, right. you know, to work for yourself and you double and you triple it. But, you know, I do kudos to the corporate companies that I worked for because they taught me everything that yeah. I know today. Yeah. Um, you know, I worked at Creative Artist Agency, yes, which did. is in L.A. Um, I also worked with William Mars Endeavor, which was um, recently acquired um, IMG while I was there. And there is nothing like corporate structure. Mm-hmm. And I'm so happy that I was able to teach it because yeah. and be a part of it because yeah. I learned from it. You know, being a part of just a system that works taught me how to build a system, you know. So it was very, like, rewarding to do it. And I wouldn't, you know, I'm happy that I've had both experiences. Well stated. You are responsible for so many women and, by extension, their families. Mm -hmm. You create jobs. Mm -hmm. You help 
uh, give people stability yes. and hope. Yeah. So how what what other things do you do philanthropically? I know you founded the Victor Cruz Foundation. Yeah. What else do you do? Because it is clearly a part of your DNA. Yeah. So you know we um you know such so much success with um, Victor's Foundation. They um you know since since we started you know they've. They've done a great job at kind of maintaining it since I've stepped away. It's been about a year, but um, we did got so much funding. We were able to rebuild the pool at the Boys and Girls Club in Patterson. We were able to implement STEM programming. Yes. Um, we funded STEM programs to be yeah. distributed nationally, so science, technology, engineering, yes. and math, making yes. it cool again. Yes. Um, you know, and also just being like pillars in the community where people realize that like you're still there and yeah. you're giving back. You yeah. know, that's um, important. You know what I do for the community now? We always are raising money at mm-hmm. the at the studios if there's an initiative you know breast cancer awareness yes. you know we'll have if there's a breast cancer survivor or someone that's going we'll raise money and we'll give oh. back to the community and we'll empower these women to tell their stories yeah you know um i also donate to um what we do is like we'll collect all the clothing that like we yes. can't fit and we'll go you know yes. we'll donate it to the local women's shelter yes. you know we'll sponsor a child for daycare for 12 months yes. for one of our employees Wonderful. like we like to, i like to do things that you know for me that hit that directly you know impacts my heart yes you know and me personally whereas like you know before my philanthropic endeavors were on like a national scale yes and now i just feel like i'm really focusing on the people that i can yeah. touch and i can feel and i yeah. can be part of their journey yeah and you know i know that i contributed to it and i can yes. talk to them and say what can we do more yes or, and you'll be be surprised these women that you touch go help other women absolutely so it's sewing, a ripple effect yes it's a yeah. ripple effect so it's great it's paying it forward it's paying it forward yeah. so I'm really happy that I've been a part of both yeah. sort of you know theories on yeah. how to give back yeah um, and you know I don't know what I'll do I know for me like I, I know I'm a great fundraiser I just think I would love to find like a board that is dear to my heart yes. that I can go and marry my old world yes. with my new endeavors yes. philanthropically and just raise funding you yeah. know because I'm great at it and yes. I, I've done it with Victor's yes. Foundation we did it was yes. great um, but I look forward to it yeah, yeah. I do too mm-hmm. and thank you for being part of my journey yes of course I really I, I am blessed you're a part of mine trust thank me thank you now how do you define two things how do you define confidence mm-hmm. because you exude it <laughs> and so does your daughter <laughs> and how do you define beauty because you are owning that too and so does your daughter so how yeah. do you define confidence and beauty um <clears throat> I think true confidence is defined by being constant. Um, And that's being constant no matter what happens outside of you, being constant as to what happens inside of you. I think a lot of times as women, we go through so many things that happen outside of us, and we allow that to define how we feel about something that happens inside of us. So I'll give you two examples. Um, You get pregnant. You have a child. um, You gain weight. You can't get yeah. the weight off. And now your confidence is no longer constant because what's happening outside of you versus yeah. how you feel about what's inside of you. Yeah. And I think true confidence is constant. So yeah. I think that in practicing confidence, yes. we should we should be practicing how to remain constant so that instead of feeling bad that we've yeah. gained weight, yeah. we can look and say that we have gained weight and yes. put a plan in place through awareness by saying, I still love myself. Right. And I'm, I'm still con- fabulous. I'm still fabulous. Yeah. yeah. I gain a couple pounds, but my confidence within myself is constant. And I know that this yeah. journey to lose this weight yes. is a different journey than it was when I didn't have it. Yeah. But I'm still who I am inside. Right. You know, if you lose a job or don't get a promotion or you, mm-hmm. you know, you can't say my work is bad and I my confidence as an employee has now right. gone down. Right. You have to say... Well, that job might not necessarily have been for me at right. that moment. What do I need to improve on? That's right. Allow your confidence to drive you. Allow constant to drive, being constant to drive your confidence. Right. And like that's how I would define confidence. And I agree with you. And I think what's very interesting about constancy and confidence is that if you don't maintain that constance of loving yourself yes. and knowing who you really are, yeah. that lack of it will actually serve to block and sabotage what it is that you're ultimately trying to do. Absolutely. You're trying to lose the weight, but you're holding you're on holding to this it. negative yes. thinking and this toxic thinking, and that actually sits in you and prevents you, part Absolutely. of the reason, from losing the weight because you're holding on to the weight right. of your toxic thoughts. Right. Whereas... 
the byproduct of eating healthy, drinking water, changing your lifestyle, the byproduct of those things is weight loss. Right. So don't focus on weight loss. Exactly. Just focus, focus on, on the journey. On the journey and being constant because you're disciplined no matter what's yeah. happening outside of you. Right. And so just have that discipline within. So yeah. <clears throat> and what that's what I think confidence is. Now, how do you define beauty? Um, I think beauty is um, defined as uh, being polite. Right. Um, I think you should be polite for destiny. Right. Yeah. Like you never know. Like you might just stroll into the supermarket yeah. <laughs> or a skating rink party right. with your daughter and f- like pop into your destiny. <laughs> and I just feel like you should be polite enough for it. Right. And be open to and it. Be open to it. And beauty is inside and mm, it's outside. Yes, beauty it is. is a form of power. Power is yes. a multifaceted thing because power does not is not just a beautiful person. It could be someone that people don't think is beautiful by the eye. Beauty has never been said that it was external. Right. We as society have described said now it that way. described beauty as external. Yeah. So when you're in the beauty space, yes. right? If you actually beauty, a lot of the beauty treatments that we do also happen internally, right? Yeah. So I think redefining beauty allows us to say it's also inside and it's outside. And I also think that beauty and confidence go together. I yes. think without one, you don't have the other, both internally and externally. And so I also just think like being beautiful is just being polite for destiny and being a uh, being available for it yeah, showing when it up. happens right yeah. whether it's a, a lash extension mm-hmm. or whether it's lip gloss could be or things. whether it's your internal smile yeah. or whether it's your powerful voice or whether yeah. it's your gentle nurturing nature yes. like beauty is within and it's external it's yeah. both you know yes. but you just have to be polite enough to like be ready for yeah. it when you know when it just comes. have it yeah all the time. I thank you, you never for know. saying that because yeah. that is the essence of my entire how many years mm-hmm. of practice and mm-hmm. you know I call it holistic plastic surgery yeah. and people are always like well what the right. hell does that mean and that is exactly what it means yeah. allow me to help you define mm-hmm. your best version of yourself mm-hmm. inside and out right. and. Yes, I can do lots of things on the outside, but frankly, mm-hmm. if we talk about things that can go complementary to and right. right go hand in hand with some of the inside work, right. then oh my gosh, the, right. results, the results are, are so much better. Right, absolutely extraordinary. So thank you yeah, for saying that. You see, you're you're being my agent already. You don't even know. <laughs> I think your and I haven't even is, quite written a check yet. To me. <laughs> <laughs> so speaking about beauty, what do you teach your daughter? about beauty and what that means. <clears throat> I um I teach my daughter that, you know, beauty is from within and I always teach her to be constant too. I yes. talk to her about that. Yes. I teach her, I talk to her about process a lot. I try to teach her process of life through algebra because An algebraic equation, if you think about it, is kind of like life. So, like, if you have one plus and then you have a parentheses and, and, you know, an exponential figure, the only thing that changes in an algebraic equation are the numbers. The numbers. Those are the variables in your life. So I try to explain to her, life is like algebra. Right. There's There's always an X. There's always always a Y. Y, And there's always numbers. All you have to do is figure out how to solve the variables that are within Mm. it, but the process never changes. Right. Right. And I always try to explain her to follow the process because in following the process, I think it will help her to remain constant outside Mm -hmm. of her. Mm -hmm. And I always tell her you should be a little polite for that. So, like, is your hair brushed? Have you moisturized your skin? This is the vessel that you're living your spiritual life in. So I talk to her about spirituality. But show up because your presence is needed. show up ready. Right, and show up ready. And so if your definition of beauty is two big pigtails, let's do it. Right. Let's just have the neatest two pigtails that we can have, right? (laughs) You You know, are you going to show up somewhere disheveled Mm. you know wrinkled you know no you're gonna you're going to iron your shirt because that's what you're supposed to do like unless you're going to a wrinkle shirt party right fine (laughs) right and I always teach her that you know beauty is not in makeup it's not in what we wear it's how we feel about ourselves and I ask her do you feel good about yourself you know when she makes decisions that I know that she's aware are wrong I ask her do you feel good that you made that decision yeah. rather than tell her that's not a good decision that's not I said why did you make a decision I tell her decisions are four boxes you have good decisions and bad decisions the things that come from good decisions are at the bottom the things that come from bad decisions, you have to decide where you want to be I'm not here to punish you and put right. you on punishment when you make the wrong decision you've decided to now not use your computer let's say yes. or not be able to have fun with your friends yeah so I try to teach her that beauty is is honesty yes you know because she's so sure. small and young yeah. you know being honest, you know, being yes. aware, being yes. constant, and 
and l- understanding that her physical being has a process. Like you have to brush your teeth, you have yep. to wash your face, yep. you have to brush your yes. hair, you have to iron your clothes. Like these these yes. things will never change. Right, because forever. you have to honor and maintain the temple. Absolutely. Yeah, which is a gift. Um, and then it teaches her process and cons- and you know how to be constant, and ritual. continuity and ritual and yes. you know and structure. And structure. Yeah. And I love it. Yeah, that's what I do. I'd love to be a fly on the yeah. wall in your house. I wonder if that'll ever change when she gets older. But. <laughs> Thank you for listening to this week's episode of Forever Fab, the podcast on fashion, the art of living, and all things beauty, curated by Dr. Shirley Madir, MD. Live beautifully and help make the world a more beautiful place.